the Newton Company welcomes you to the 2130 grand finale of the 25th Zero Gravity Tournament. The hyper local gravity engines were just turned on and the audience is buzzing and the final is about to begin in just a few minutes. The world's best teams competed all year to be here and now the surviving four teams will be entered to win the championship. Led by their daring commanders, who is going to capture the coveted flag? How many troopers will be sacrificed in order for them to win? Jumpers, which team will make the best use of the playing area's vertical and horizontal fields? Ladies and gentlemen, you are attending tonight one of the greatest events since zero gravity technology has ever been replaced by that old pesky gravity. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main event for zero gravity. Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is a treat because it's very interesting. And the game is about being in space and jumping around back and forth between walls using low gravity to, I guess, zero gravity as you would call it, because we're playing Zero Gravity by District Games. It's for two to four players and you're basically going to be playing, oh, like Ender's Game, how you have those guys bouncing around back and forth on the wall, shooting each other and sniping each other from distance as well as slashing each other with swords. It's basically that little aspect of that game, uh, that movie, in a nutshell, into a game, right? And you'll be utilizing a huge playing space. As you saw previously, you have this big zero gravity board that actually rotates as you play the game. And it's going to have components that uh, you can utilize either jumping down or jumping from side to side. There's different characters that will do different types of jumps and whatnot. But the idea of the game is basically you're trying to eliminate your opponents and gain as many points as possible. Depending on how difficult you want the game to be, is going to depend on uh, how long it is, of course, based on the number of points you can keep track of, as well as all the added stuff you can have. But you have obstacles, as well as the different types of sponsor cards and whatnot. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. Let's go ahead and show you what it looks like and all the cool, crazy components of the game. This is zero gravity and only some of the components for the game. Why? Well, that's because in here are the rest of the components and we'll show you afterward. But I'm going to give you a good idea of what's in the game just by showing you what's here. First of all, there are different player mats that are going to include each of the different types of units that each of the different uh, teams are going to have. The Moscow Jackals and the Tokyo Demons are two of the four teams that we're going to get to have a sample of today. Tells you their stats as well as the character's ability to move, uh, to defend, their melee ranged, and then their secondary movement. This is their cheer score which is basically the score that's going to earn you the victory uh, in the game. And then over here we have currency and energy. Currency actually will turn into energy, and each character's energy is basically their health points, and the total of health points you could have them increase to for a max is listed on this card here. You've also got spawn points and flags. These are flags here for each of the different teams. Over here, these guys are the spawn points, and you can have more than one. And then we've got bomb tokens. These ones here are chests. These over here are basically going to be uh, blockades that will stop from seeing line of sight and being able to throw over minions and whatnot. And then over here are the attack die, which tells you what each of their attacks are and what color die you use for each different type of attack. Each of the game's uh, components are going to include these little meeples here and or I'm going to guess that they're going to include actual miniatures that you're going to be using with uh, magnetic strips on the bottom of them, probably in suit somehow in the plastic, as well as the type. Now right here, these are just the prototypes. So we have troopers here and then we've got the uh, these uh, for both color teams as well as there's four additional ones, which show you here that are actually inside this box here. And then these are the minions in the game, or monsters. We've got mine layers, minotaurs, and replicas. These are the stop and go, or ready or not ready tokens that you can flip over throughout the game. You're going to have spawning dice here, and of course, sponsorship cards, which you can purchase and then play at the beginning of a round in order to do something interesting, such as shooting a laser beam and whatnot. Anyway, that's the basic of what's included in the game, including the box, the rule book, and this big hulking monstrosity, which is, I'm going to go ahead and take you to right now to show you what's in the game and uh, all the different components inside of it and how it functions. So welcome to the inside of the zero gravity chamber. And of course, you're going to be making this utilizing the different plastic materials and the full on board. This is all one connected board that you put inside this little container here. Uh, this is going to be one of the sides that is for spawning units. And as you can see, there are two different players in the game right now, but you could play up to four. You got the B2, B1 area, and then you have the top up here is going to be the A1 and the A2. I'm going to go ahead and take you on a little tour of everything inside this board. 
board here, moving this zero gravity chamber, which is also something you can do in the game. As you can see, uh, one player has chosen their flag spot, which is in the B2 area, and one person has chosen the B1. With a two player game, you choose either A1 and A1 and A2 or B1 and B2. When you play with more players, you use both, utilize both sides at the start of the game. You're also gonna have a spawning point to, point to start with, and you're gonna put a con commander outside these areas here, as well as it's simply spotting one of the main units, which is gonna be uh, these troopers here. All the units are labeled here, but I'm sure they'll look differently if you're gonna have those plastic molds. This is the board here, and as you can see, there is a jumper spot, which allows jumpers to jump from one side of the board to another side. And then you've got the jump area, which allows any of your uh, unique units to jump from one side to another, along with this side as well. If you're inside the middle, you don't actually get to do that, so you can't jump inside this area here. However, if you're on the top area, you can jump down to the bottom area um, with utilizing your jumping units. Uh, these spaces here are basically going to be the spawning locations. When you roll two die at the beginning of your turn, you'll spawn things uh, such as minotaurs or uh, replicators or mine layers on these locations, along with these chests here, which will give you additional currency at the start of your turn. So they're really good to utilize throughout the game. And they'll also let you move around monsters and whatnot. Uh, on this side of the board, we'll go ahead and switch it up for you. That you're going to see uh, the uh, other side, which is going to be a gateway here, right? You're trying to take, the objective of the game is to take either your mine to uh, the gateway, or you're trying to capture your opponent's flag and bring it to the other side of the board. You're also trying to defeat your opponent's units and whatnot. This looks very similar to the other side I just showed you. However, it has more spawning spaces, and there's no A1, A2, B1, B2 areas for our players to spawn. Uh, let's go ahead and show you the other side of the board. This here is the A1, A2 locations, very similar in nature to the top space, uh, with a, a different uh, couple spawning locations, but otherwise uh, almost an exact, re exact replica of what you're supposed to be looking at. This side, our final one, is going to be the mine location. This is the area in which players are basically going to be utilizing this mine and sending it either to another player's uh, spawning location to destroy it, or sending it to the opposite side of the board, board up top there to try and uh, gain victory points. So it's got a capture the flag slash area control slash tactical aspect in the game. Still yet again, the jumpers and jumper area as long along with these little side panels here. When you look at the board here, if you can, you'll see side panels where characters can move across, as well as jumping area from one side to another side. But overall, that's what you're gonna get included inside this area here. This is obviously very, very far advanced into the game, so you're actually not gonna have all this to start with, but you will eventually as you continue. There's also spaces on the board that represent places you cannot cross, as well as the objective or ability to place down these guys here, which can stop movement provided you don't block certain spaces like these spawning spaces. All right, let's come up and talk about how to play the game. All right, guys, so we're back, and I went ahead and set it up so that there's two players in the game, and the setup is pretty much complete. There are basically four different sections in a round, and it's going to be restocking, troop deployment, champion, and then uh, spawning monsters. The first thing you do is for restocking is you're going to basically uh, draw a sponsorship card to start with. You're also going to then uh, draw coins equal to uh, first your value, which is always two, plus as many spawn points as you have, and then for every uh, little crate you you collect you'll gain additional that way then you're going to move on to troop deployment which means you're going to get to spawn one of your troopers on any um spawning location around one of those guys and then you after, after that you, you utilize every single troop you have on the board so you'll either you'll be able to move them one or two spaces depending on the different type of team you are or and and you'll also be able to attack or you can choose to run. Running means you get to go in a straight distance of up to three spaces. It's basically X plus two. And then you cannot attack. You can't use any actions after that. But it's useful, especially for your little guys that only move one to maybe two spaces. The champion phase is interesting because it goes from player to player, utilizing these little tokens here. You're simply going to uh, flip it when you want to pass, if you don't want to continue anymore. Or you have two other options. You can activate a champion by spending one of your points, or you can go ahead and spawn a champion by placing points equal to the highest amount of life total they have or less and then spawning them onto the field based on your spawning locations some champions or so, some teams have different abilities like this the, the the jackals are able to spawn a trooper at the beginning of a turn next to any of their units and the tokyo demons have their own unique ability which lets them spawn uh, uh, score an extra point for each of the different uh, things they can do they can gain one more cheer down here is the cheer location as you can see i've went ahead and set it up on the board here hopefully you can see um each player is 
set up on B1 or B2. You have uh, the champion or commander is anywhere on the outskirts. You get one of these little walls here to put anywhere you want, and then you're going to get your uh, your flag and your spo your first spawner. You can spawn more though if you choose to. And then after that, you're going to begin the game. Like I said, taking turns, uh, and of course, st starting by restocking, drawing uh, one of these cards here. You can utilize them at the beginning of your turn by spending one of these points here, and they do different things. This one here is a cross attack, which has a special area attack. Refer to the diagram on the card, so it tells you how the attack works with your units, and you can utilize them for the turn. Some of them are a full turn long effect. This one says you can perform a drop from any surface, and you also win a cheerleader, which I can't talk about too much because I don't really know what's about what those are about. Those are on the Kickstarter campaign, which you'll get to go ahead and check to see. Um, over here, after that, you're going to go ahead and uh, gain your coins. So you get two coins plus the number of spawners you have and the number of chests that you've collected. Once you've collected one from the chest, though, the chest goes away so they don't stay forever. Then you have the troop deployment, uh, which is simply taking one of your troopers and placing them next to one of your spawners. So obviously for the red team here, uh, which is going to be the Moscow Jackals, he's actually already going to have a unit and he can spawn it next adjacent to any of his units there but then after that uh, in turn order you're going to have players placing a trooper um, and then activating it so making sure you place it right next to a spawner and then of course after you do that they can move their spaces these guys are jackals so they can only move uh, one space and then spawning one trooper for him Okay, and of course he could choose then to activate if you'd like he gets to actually move two spaces and you can move diagonal if you wish um, then you're going to go on to the champion phase where you can buy basically champions or convert them into energy, make them useful, and put them on the board, uh, starting with the player who has the least amount of uh, cheer value, I believe, or the, uh, or the person who goes first, in turn order, basically. You can go ahead and take one, two, three, as many as you'd like. So let's say it's the red guys here, and you can place up to three if they have the currency. And what's interesting is you start off with this, this is the stuff you start off with, but when you, you utilize it, it turns into energy or health, and thus you'll be able to take one of your... Uh, Four different uh, special champions. These guys are the ones that can be activated more than once during a round. Here is my sniper. Now for the blue guy, let's see if I can find out. So here's my sniper for the red guy. And place it down just like you would. Snipers are cool because they can shoot diagonally across any distance as long as it doesn't block line of sight. So they can be very useful in that way. You can also, uh, then after he's done that action, he'll get to take his turn and do an action and maybe spawn one of his guys. Maybe he'll want to spawn a... Oh, let's see. We'll, we'll, let's find something interesting, right? This is, I guess we just have the sniper for now. Wherever they are. I'll have to find them later, I suppose. Oh, Harrier, right here. I can spawn him right there if you'd like. And he'd also utilize these uh, points. He can use up to four if he would like. Um, and then after that, the next player would get to go again, rinsing and repeating. These things basically mean you don't want to use your turn anymore. You want to save the rest of your resources. He could, of course, choose to spend one of his more resources for his turn to then move his unit. Uh, the sniper one two and three and then if he could shoot he would he could shoot at a full-on diagonal distance though which is pretty cool but unfortunately can not make anything happen there next player can choose to go or pass so he could choose to pass there saving his resources and then in which case he could play as much as he wanted until he either had no more resources to spend units to move uh, then he can choose to pass after that happens basically monster spawn you're going to be taking these die and you're going to be rolling them for the first setup of the game you're actually just going to spawn them and referring to a chart based on what these things say uh, on the entire board here you're going to actually see uh, different spawning points. It'll be two different numbers. Either it'll be an 8 and a 9, or a 4 and a 10, a 7s, 5s uh, and 6s. This here I rolled a 9, so I could place anything I got from the chart on here. And that's where you're going to actually be getting these chests here, which give you bonus points. You're going to be spawning monsters, like mine layers, that actually drop these mines around that can explode uh, on contact. As well as the ability for the lowest player with cheer is going to actually be able to spawn and move the units first, moving them around the board, utilizing them to either throw units off the board or blow people up with their mines and whatnot. After the spawning phase is over, uh, the next phase begins again with restocking and players can continue the game. Now, it's interesting as well, is I'll talk about a couple aspects, such as if we can go ahead and look at the board here, uh, as you see, we're going to have uh, the bottom here is a mine, and if you can get this mine all the way to the top of the board, that will actually explode and give you a bunch of cheer points. Another way to get a bunch of cheer points is by taking your opponent's flag 
and bringing it all the way across the board to the other side with your units. You can actually go ahead and do a relay with them, moving from one space to another, handing it off without using an action, and then utilizing the next move, unit to move, which is, could be a cool little strategy to utilize. You can also bring back flags from your uh, their base to your base, which will net you a couple a point. It's, it's not as good, obviously, as moving across the board here. You could take mines and bring them back to your opponent's spawn points and blow them up and get a bunch of points as well. Depending on the length of the game is how... Uh, uh, how many points you're going to need in the cheer. You can play up to like 15 or even up to 50 points if you'd like. That's just going to decrease the uh, length of the game. And when you play with more players, you're going to utilize both sides of the board here. There's these jump spots, which means for special units like jumpers, you can actually jump uh, earlier in an earlier distance from here to here. With normal unique units, uh, such as the commander, the sniper, the harrier, you can jump in this jump area from one space to another. Literally, from if it was C4, you jump to the other side of C4. Um, and another interesting one is Harrier. If they were on the top here, they can actually go ahead and drop down and explode doing damage. They have secondary, all characters have these like secondary attacks, which they can utilize in some way to be of benefit. And don't forget, of course, about the sponsor cards. The ob objective of the game is to get the most cheer. If you do, you win the game. If not, well, sorry, good luck next year on your next uh, Zero Gravity tournament. But that's the basic idea of the game. I think you get it. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So that is Zero Gravity in a nutshell, right? Uh, the other interesting thing about the Game, which I wanted to talk about in this portion is the fact that when you roll doubles when you're doing the spawning monster phase you'll actually be able to rotate this board and change the horizontal or vertical locations of the of the units which then will allow certain ones of them to be able to uh, to jump from place to place and everything here is magnetized as you can see um, so that's really really cool as a prototype this thing is awesome it's really really well done you can tell it's all 3d printed and whatnot and the idea of the meeples is a good idea um, this game is definitely gonna be a lot more fun with the utilization of miniatures which in general I don't necessarily care if the games come with them or not but it'll make it a lot easier to tell the units apart in the game as well as using those those bases I don't know if they're gonna do that but they utilize those colored bases I think that's a cool idea as well so you know units are yours there's only actually four unique units in the game the rest are troopers so it doesn't make it too complex or crazy but it has enough in this where the meeples you're like looking where is it again i had another thing where i was like i'm either gonna really like the this i guess you call it a gimmick but it, not all gimmicks are bad obviously i like a lot of them in fact but this one is the 3d board rotating it i'm like why not just make a really large flat board uh and that is because you actually do utilize the jumping aspects of the game including uh certain portions are going to be up and certain portions are going to be down at different times in the game which was really cool and i was like wow that actually made it a valid use of making this crazy large board um is it going to take a lot of table space yes is the game complicated actually no it's not very complicated as you saw there's only four four real phases of the game you're collecting resources utilizing your troopers utilizing your special units and then you're simply spawning the monsters and moving around the board if you have the ability to and knocking players off it does feel like one of those games um it reminded me of ender's game the movie i don't know if you guys have seen that or not where the kids are going around in the zero gravity chamber shooting at each other doing their defensive positionings trying to either capture a flag or eliminate the enemy team it all had this kind of built into this game and it really utilized that theme very well if you like that aspect of a theme if you like tactical games capture the flag area control this is something that might be up your alley like i said it does take up a little bit of table space and everything i don't think is full it, it, it's really close but i don't think it's fully polished just yet some of the cards need to be a little better worded i think um and the utilization of of, of like i'm not i wasn't exactly sure if everybody got to roll for spawning monsters after the setup or it was just the player with the lowest cheer which is i think what the basically what the rules said um and just little little things like that everything else was very very simple to understand using the characters as relay racers there's a bunch of like little secret strategies which i won't tell you can you guys can figure it out on your own if you think the game's something for you but that was really cool also the fact that all the different characters have their different die which are all utilized they're basically six-sided die but they have um either damage or no damage when you're fighting other players which i didn't talk about too much but it's really really simple you roll a die for attack whether it be four dice or three then they roll their defense whether it be th two or three dice your hits outweigh their defense hits you win you do damage to them if they have no health they die that's why utilizing actions 
on your characters will provide them with more health, but reduce the amount of times you can activate them on a round or whether or not you want to actually utilize them, which gives you this, how much do I want to push this? Do I want to do a lot less this round or do I want to do a lot more? This cards in the game that are called like cheat, where you can utilize these blue dice, which are way likely to hit. That's five out of six likelihood to hit. Um, and let you do use that for the entire turn. It'll let you roll the blue dice as opposed to any of the other ones. At that point, sometimes you might think, well, maybe if this player just played that at the beginning of the turn, because that's when you play these, these uh, sponsor cards, then maybe I'll wait this round, save up my energy for the next round, and be all the more powerful, and just take the hits. Uh, the two-player game is fine. Uh, I think this game is going to play a lot better with three and especially four players. I would even like to see a team game, 2v2. I just played the two-player version, and as it stands, it's fun. I really do enjoy it, and it does give me enough reason to move around the board. I didn't feel like I was just sitting there on one side fighting against my opponent, which was what I was also afraid of, because you want to take those bombs. The most points you're going to get is by moving around the board. It forces you to do that. It forces your opponents to chase you, and certain characters can do different things. One time, my um, opponent was walking across the ground, making it to their side of the board and I wasn't going to catch up to him. Luckily I had a spawn point at the top of the building. So I spawned a Harrier, dropping him down, exploding on the guy and destroying him and thusly getting my flag and bringing it back to my base. Cool little instances like that do happen. The artwork is stunning. It's really good in this game. I really enjoy it. Uh, the theming is awesome. Like I said, the components are very high quality for a prototype and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this game in play. Like I said though, it's up to you if you guys will think this is something that would be interesting for you. Personally, I liked it. I thought it's a cool game. I'm really interested in seeing what the Kickstarter campaign is going to look like because it does have a lot going for it as it is and there's more stuff that i know is not included from with what i got than what will be on the campaign so i want to check that out as well otherwise though it's up to you decide to back zero gravity or not the choice is yours all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter board game review if you like this video go and check out those videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment it all does help and we do greatly appreciate it as well as checking out zero gravity can be on kickstarter in the description below this game i don't know why but ender's game just keeps ringing in my head when i see that cool like space battle and as i was playing i was like yeah i'm gonna do this and that and here's my formations and whatnot anyway check it out also, check out our site, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. As well as our friends at the Giveaway Geek and Cast. They got some great stuff going on there. Giveaways, as well as some cool products. All right, guys, that's all I got this time. And as always, I look forward to flying with you in zero gravity. 